Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for a very important discussion related to our Port Washington community. My name is Michael Hines, the proud superintendent of schools who will be moderating our esteemed panelists. Now, as the coronavirus pandemic reaches record levels throughout the nation, the Port Washington <laughs> Union Free School District is hosting this community forum with 15 influential local leaders to discuss how to mitigate the spread on Long Island amid the holiday season. The objective of our panel discussion is to hone in on the significance and urgency of uniting as a community from all facets of life to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, understanding the importance of adhering to local and regional health guidance and taking necessary precautions to ensure that schools remain open. Our panelists have prepared to make a statement to share with our community at large, and we felt it was critically important that each leader had the ability to share their message to our, with their audience. Now, before I introduce our guest tonight, I just wanna say a few words. First, thank you to our Board of Education, our administrators, our teachers, and our staff. I wanna thank you to our HSAs and to John Johnert, our video engineer extraordinaire, and a huge shout out to all of our school nurses and Dawn Bollerman and Dr. Stephanie Allen for their work throughout the year. And a special thank you to Ann, Dr. Ann Gl uh, Ganser, who is a parent in our community that made this suggestion. But most important, I wanna thank our students. I continue to be in awe of your love of learning, despite the difficulties and hardships that you have endured. You are the reason why we are here tonight. We do not want our schools to close not for one day because we know this is where you thrive. And I'm hoping tonight will impact our parents, our school community to listen to what we have to say so we can stop the spread and keep infection rates as low as possible. We have heard time and time again that it is extremely safe to be within our schools. And finally, I implore our Nassau County leaders to make to follow suit like every other county in New York to have a LSL, a limited service laboratory, to do the testing for school districts if a geographic area moves into a yellow or orange zone, just like our neighbors in Suffolk County. School districts can't do this by themselves. So tonight we will hear from President um, of our Board of Education, Nora Johnson, Judy Bosworth, our town supervisor for the town of North, of he uh, North Hempstead, we have from Northwell Health, Dr. Nicole Germano. We have uh, Rabbi uh, Shalom uh, Paltiel from uh, Shabbat of Port Washington. From St. Peter's, uh, we have uh, Monsignor Robert Clerkin. We have uh, Detective Tony Gazello from the Port Washington Police Department. We have from the United Methodist Church, Pastor David Collins. Uh, we also have Marianne Del Monte, for, uh, the Councilwoman for the Town of North Hempstead. From the community synagogue, we have Rabbi Erwin Zeplowitz. We also have Dr. Naomi Jackson uh, Jackman, who is a district physician. We also have uh, Dr. Wilkins, who's also a district physician as well. From the Reconstructivist Synagogue of the, of the North Shore, we have Rabbi Jody Sif. We also have from Temple Beth Israel, Rabbi Michael Mishkin. We also have our esteemed uh, board trustee and vice president of the Board of Education, uh, Beth Weisberg. And then finally, we'll hear from Dr. Stephanie Allen, who is our executive director from Pupil Personnel Services. And believe it or not, we will have this all wrapped up within an hour or less. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce uh, now uh, Nora Johnson, who is our Port Washington Board of Education president. Sorry, Nora. Yeah. yeah. Off to a good start. Good, good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Nora Johnson, president of the school board. As Dr. Hines explained, we've invited leaders, esteemed leaders from the town of North Hempstead to speak directly to our community about where we are nine months into the COVID crisis and how we can keep our loved ones safe as we enter a very difficult and very challenging and very unique holiday season. On behalf of the entire board, I wanna welcome and thank everyone who's joining us up here. I'm honored to be with you, albeit virtually as we all are. And to our superintendent, Dr. Hines, who organized this thought forum. And thank you again, Mike, for that. 
As a leader in the school district, I'm very proud to say that our health and safety protocols are working in the schools. To date, we have not heard any reports of any transmissions in the school itself. For that, we applaud our incredible administrators, our wonderful nurses, our teachers, and other staff members who have worked tireless, tireless, tirelessly since schools reopened in September. We also thank, as Dr. Hines said, our students and we thank their families who have complied with the necessary rules, including mask wearing, distancing, hand washing, daily screenings, and other guidelines. And this has kept our schools safe and open. The schools are actually a safe haven where Port's children have been able to receive academic instruction and social and emotional support. And equally importantly, they continue to socialize with their peers safely during this COVID crisis. The only way that that can continue is if we follow the rules, not just in school. We have to follow them every day, 24 seven. We've just heard and we've all heard before that the numbers are going up. The numbers are going up in Port Washington as they are everywhere. But the truth is that our numbers seem to be higher than some of our other neighboring districts in Nassau County. There's different theories for that, including that we're doing more testing. But regardless of the why, as a community, we have to be even more vigilant about protecting our loved ones from COVID. We had some discussions in the school about going remote for a period of time after Thanksgiving so that the kids whose families are following the rules don't find themselves quarantined because of the families who aren't being quite as safe. We decided against that because school is still the safest and the best place for our kids to be. However, and to say it again, the only way schools can stay open is if we're all mindful of the risks and willing to be personally and collectively accountable as we move into the holiday season. Right now, one of my best friends is ill with COVID and she's in port. And it's actually the first time I'm seeing it up that close. Trust me, it's not just about keeping the schools open. It's about taking care of each other, watching out for each other and helping together to get our great community through this situation. Once again, I wanna thank our leaders, the community leaders who are here tonight. Thank you so much. I know that everybody out there who's, who will be watching is looking forward to hearing from them as am I. So thank you. And first up, the supervisor of the town of North Hempstead, Judy Bosworth. Thank you. So thank you, Nora. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Never quite sure. Um, thank you for your lovely words. And so Dr. Hines, thank you for bringing us all together. You know, I think at this point, everybody has heard we're in the middle of a pandemic that we need to be wearing masks, that we need to social distance, that we need to be washing our hands. We shouldn't be having large gatherings. And yet it's still going on. And you know, they say the definition of insanity is to do the same thing again and again and again and expect a different outcome. So this is doing something a little bit different. It's bringing a group of really wonderful people together, leaders in the community, and hopefully this will be another way of reaching out to get that message out there. I know I'm looking forward to continuing the partnership that the town has with this wonderful Port Washington community. And I know that Councilwoman Del Monte is working so hard to also get the message out. One of the things that we have done a little bit different is that as the numbers in Port Washington started to rise, we got the mayors of Port Washington together, um, Chief Del Muro from the Port Washington Police Department, Dr. Hines, a number of community leaders getting on a phone call together with Nassau County, with a representative from the state, having all levels of government coming together to say, okay, what can we do to help? What can we do a little bit differently to get that message out there? 
And as a result of that first call, and I know that there will be other calls, we did issue a joint letter that um, I know was, was um, I, I believe on your website and it was sent to the, the press and uh, the, on YouTube. We're, we're uh, disseminating it every place um, because it's another way of reaching out. We're also currently um, working on a PSA, so public service announcement that has different leaders of the community getting that message out there, basically saying, wear a mask. This is a pandemic. It is something we have to take seriously. We have to make sure that everybody understands just how important it is, Nora, as you said, to follow those rules. And we have seen over the course of the last month that there has been, unfortunately, a significant rise in COVID-19 across the country and including right here in Port Washington. And unfortunately, people are putting themselves in risky situations. And what they're doing is they're putting their health at risk, but they're really also putting everybody else's health in risk when they do that. So we can't let our guard down. We have to remain vigilant. It's so important, more important now than ever to wear face masks, to practice social distancing. They found that these measures actually work. It works. If you wear a mask, if you don't have large group gatherings, if you're not gathering inside, if you wash your hands, it seems to be asking so little. I know I, you know, one of the things that we're doing at the town is we're doing robocalls to getting everybody the message, the coronavirus update. And you know, the last call that I made, I said, I can't believe I'm spending another holiday on Zoom. But you know what? These are the things we need to do. We need to be celebrating only with people in our own households and if we want to join with, with, with our loved ones, with our friends, we need to be doing it virtually. And it, it's hard because you want to be with the people that you love. But by doing it this way, you're ensuring that we'll be with the people that we love for holidays in the future. And I think, you know, it's a sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice that we all collectively have to be willing to make. Um, you know, one of the things um, that we have at the town is we, we've created a website www.northhempstead.gov slash coronavirus. And that's dedicated solely to the latest uh, coronavirus updates. Um, it's so important that everybody has the opportunity to get these updates. We're trying to find all different ways of doing it. When I say a robocall, the reason it's important, I feel, for us to do a robocall is not everybody is able to um, access emails. You know. You, we live in such a technological society and you think that everybody's on email, everybody's on Zoom, everybody's on Twitter. That's not the case. Um, our seniors are, the, I think the best seniors, you know, not only in the town of North Hempstead, but they are the best seniors in New York State in the country. So many are technologically um, sophisticated. They're on Zoom meetings, but there are some that are not. So we're making sure that we're getting the message out on our North Hempstead TV, um, on public service announcements having robocalls. We're looking for all the different ways to get the message out, to get Governor Cuomo's message out. He's been really right at the forefront of cautioning us, of letting us know where we are, what we're facing, and what we need to do to make sure that we stay safe. We want to stay safe. We want to make sure our loved ones um, are staying safe. So right now, you know, some of the measures are not having indoor gatherings of more than 10 people, not having anyone in your house that doesn't already live in your house. Thanksgiving, again, we're hoping that people are not gonna be traveling, that they're only gonna be celebrating not only the Thanksgiving holidays, but the holidays that, that we celebrate um, in, in December. Again, just with members of, of your family that live in your house and knowing that we're gonna to have to be doing this virtually, but again, making that sacrifice. So. Um, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm going to get back to that PSA that we did with, with so many of you that are actually um, on, on this meeting tonight. I'm encouraging everyone to view it on the town's YouTube channel. You can search Town of North Hempstead on YouTube to share it with anyone that you can when it becomes available. It's another way of getting the message out. So, Dr. Hines, I thank you for bringing us all together. Um, we have the best school system really 
um, in a, anywhere. The Port Washington schools are so fabulous. And seeing that this is an effort that's, that's being brought to us by the superintendent, by this wonderful Board of Education, to again, find another way of getting that message out. We need to social distance. We need to be wearing masks. We need to be washing our hands. We need to be doing all the things that we can to protect each other and the people that we love. So thank you and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Supervisor Bosworth. We certainly appreciate it. Um, up next, we have uh, from Northwell Health, we have Dr. Uh, Nicole uh, Germano. Nicole, I'm not sure if we can if we can hear you. Well, after since I probably been part of 2000 Zoom meetings, what I'm going to do, we'll try to figure out the audio for uh, Dr. Germano's um, where where she is. I'm going to move on to uh, Rabbi. Um, Pal to y'all. Um, I want to say thank you, Rabbi, for, for joining us uh, this evening. Now I'm going to turn it over to you at this point. Thank you, Dr. Hines. I must say this is a very special evening for me. 30 years in this town, and uh, this has never happened before for a school superintendent to gather a group of leaders like this. I'm honored to be part of this group, and I think it's a wonderful idea. It shows to points to the fact that we're one community temples, churches, uh, synagogues, school district, and the, certainly a uh, pandemic reminds us that we're, we're in the same boat. And to echo the words of the supervisor, when each of us in our own homes, our own families, uh, bothers ourselves, troubles ourselves, inconveniences ourselves, especially during holidays, to stay safe, we're not just protecting ourselves, we're protecting the whole town. The old adage, you know, we're all in this boat. If I make a hole under my seat, it's not just under my seat. So. Uh, I think uh, let's be extra vigilant. We're doing a favor to the entire town. And obviously, uh, hopefully we'll get through this together. Um, you know, this uh, from a religious perspective, health always comes first. Life and well-being comes first before everything. At the same time, of course, we're trying to balance that with emotional well-being. You know, we have to give our kids a holiday, to give our families a holiday. And obviously that's that's the challenge. I think that's part of what this meeting is about, right? There are holiday season coming up, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and the year-end holidays. And uh, how do we enjoy them and celebrate them and give ourselves and our kids the holidays while being as safe as possible? And, uh, you know, my thought is we got to be creative. It's going to be a different year. Um, you know, we at Chabad usually have the menorah lighting event at the station. And we're doing something totally different. We're doing a drive-in, like a drive-in movie at Bar Beach. Some of you may have seen it already advertised. It's going to be completely safe. You do not leave your car. And I'm really proud of it because it's a way to do something that will be exciting, fun for the kids, for the people, and at the same time, 101% safe with no sacrifice on that front. So just sharing that as a way to say, you know, we got to be creative. It's not easy, but we got to find ways to do it and uh, celebrate and enjoy each other, and enjoy our families without sacrificing our safety, which by extension is the rest of the community. And uh, uh, again, thank you for doing this. And thank you for uh, the entire community for being as careful as we can be. And just to uh, close out by saying, remember to wash your hands and in whose hands you are. Please God, we'll get through this. And we'll uh, laugh again and enjoy and celebrate in person once again. Thank you again, Dr. Hines and this entire group. Thank you, Rabbi. We certainly appreciate it. I, I can listen to you speak all day. I really can't, can't thank you enough for, for being here this evening. Um, I'm going to try to go back to uh, Dr. Germano. Uh, Dr. Germano, let's try this one more time. How are you? Still can't hear you. That's all right. So I'm going to circle back around one more time. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out for sure. We still have about 12 more people, so don't worry about it. We're going to go to detec uh, Detective uh, Gazello. Hello, Detective. How are you, sir? Can you hear me now? Ken. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for including us in this wonderful community forum, Dr. Hines. 
Um, you know, once again, the Port Washington Police continues to monitor the pandemic, and we're working with local other first responder agencies to provide the appropriate safety measures for its members, as well as the public we serve. Thanks to the Port Washington Police District Chief's Office and Board of Police District Commissioners, the Emergency Management Coordinator for the Port Washington Police has been able to provide its officers with all of the appropriate personal protective equipment throughout the pandemic. The priority has been to equip our officers with the necessary equipment needed to assist our community during this unprecedented public health crisis. Unfortunately, we can't do it alone. We need and ask <clears throat> for the community's help and the public's cooperation in following guidelines set by the CDC to help prevent our community from returning to the pause phase as seen earlier this year. Remember, it's not just about you and your family. It's about your neighbors, our schools, our businesses, and our elderly population that is also affected if proper measures are not taken. Please educate your family, especially your children, on the simple ways to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. Wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands often, and avoid contact with those who are sick. Let's do our part to keep our community open and our families safe. Wishing all of you a happy Thanksgiving and everybody remain safe. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, and thank you for joining us. I'm going to turn it over now to Pastor uh, David Collins. Hello, Pastor. Good evening. Hey, good evening, Dr. Hines. Thank you for uh, thinking of us to be a, be a part of this. Uh, my wife, Pastor uh, Romana Abalova, and I, we co-pastor the Methodist Church here in town. We also administrate Child's World uh, Nursery School and proudly charter PAC 77 and Troop 7. You know, just as we did during Holy Week and, and Easter back in April, we got to adjust how we celebrate the holidays. Normally, and this is pretty selfish of me, Thanksgiving is the one holiday clergy can celebrate normally because, well, we work on Easter, we work on Christmas, but this year is different. You know, we know Thanksgiving and Christmas, they're going to be different. We've already canceled three trips to go visit my parents and family down in South Carolina. And my family here, we're going to continue to make changes, not just in our personal lives, but also in our ministries in order to do our part in loving our neighbor as ourselves by not taking the unnecessary risk that we see a lot of folks doing. We owe our medical personnel from the doctors, practitioners, nurses, the assistants, custodial staffs to do our part so they know that we still love them and care about the work they are doing. We owe our students a school year that isn't going to be any more unusual than it already is. You know, one of the great positives in all of this is that we made a difference in our community this past spring. And God willing, we will, with joyful obedience, do it again if we have to, because we're Port Washington. We've come too far to give up hope now after so many months. Beloveds, the holidays are what we make of them. I'd rather Zoom with my parents then run the risk, however minimal I think it may be, to travel to see them on the off chance we call spread. Because working in a church, we have to be crafty with what we have because it's probably not the nicest thing or, or we only have a limited amount. And we've taken that experience to be sure that our kids and that our family had and will continue to have memorable birthdays and holidays so that we can say with joyful hearts that when all of this is behind us, we know our kids will remember that we chose care and compassion above our own wishes and desires. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you, Pastor Collins. Much, very much appreciated. Now I'm gonna circle back to uh, Dr. Germano. Good evening, Dr. Dr. Germano, how are you? Hi. Good, how are you? Can you hear me now? We can just like that old Verizon okay. commercial. Yes, good to hear you. You know, right? hear me now. <laughs> oh, good. Yes, you know, 2020. What can we do? All this technology. 
Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Nicole Germano. I work for Northwell Health. I'm an outpatient pediatrician. Um, you know, I'm going to pretty much say a lot of the same things that everybody already mentioned, you know, the importance of this, following the CDC guidelines with the Department of Health. Um, but I do want to give you guys a little, you know, kind of what we've seen in our practice as far as cases with COVID-19 in the pediatric population. Um, you know, up until about three weeks ago, we actually had not had a single positive um, PCR for COVID-19 um, in any of our patients. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been having, you know, maybe two to three per week. Um, and all of these patients have, you know, a couple of things in common. So, you know, they either have a close household contact, such as a parent um, or an older sibling that works outside of the home. And as many people know that once you have one person positive in your house, you have about greater than an 80% chance of the rest of the house becoming positive. Um, and then the other type of patient that we've seen are those that have been going to parties and gatherings that did not follow the appropriate um, guidelines, meaning more than 10 people, parties being held indoors, um, nobody wearing masks. So they weren't following the appropriate guidelines. Um, you know, so those are the types of positive cases that we've seen in our practice, you know, thus far. So, you know, we all, as a community, we need to make, remain vigilant and follow the Department of Health guidelines. Um, you know, and it's really important, especially during the holiday season, that we, you know, are aware of these guidelines and that we follow them closely. So just to sort of refresh everybody's memory, um, which I'm sure we all know, we got to continue to mask, especially in public and around people that are outside of our household, and we need to wear the masks appropriate. I can't tell you how many times you see people that come in with the mask below the nose, not fully covering the mouth, or it doesn't fit properly. So we need to make sure everything is appropriately covered. Um, social distancing, the six feet apart rule, um, is another thing that we really need to follow, keeping the gatherings less than 10 people. And if we have to gather or we have to have a party, we really need to try to have that outside where there's good ventilation, um, you know, to help decrease the risk of spread. Um, and we really need to keep up with the good hand hygiene, you know, washing the hands with soap and water, using the appropriate hand sanitizer, and really cleaning all the common surfaces that a lot of people can touch. Um, so that way we can help protect ourselves. We all have to remember and keep in mind that the more people we interact with, the longer we have that interaction for, the higher our risk of either contracting or spreading COVID-19 becomes. So we really need to try to, you know, limit our interactions with people outside of our house. Um, you know, and I know everybody, you know, is tired of being in the pandemic, um, you know, but we really need to do everything to protect ourselves. Um, you know, we are recommending that, you know, in addition to following the CDC guidelines, as I mentioned before, um, that everybody is up to date with their seasonal flu vaccine. Um, a lot of people forget that, you know, this is the start of flu season, and if we have a really bad flu season, we're going to be in really big trouble um, on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, you know, so every person that's six months and older should be up to date with the flu vaccine. Of course, being a pediatrician, we always want you to be up to date with your age-appropriate vaccines as well. So, you know, I hope that everybody has a safe and great Thanksgiving, but we need to keep in mind that we need to follow these guidelines um, to ensure that everybody stays healthy, um, you know, and hopefully we can have the rest of the holiday season um, go well, too. So that's pretty much it. I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving, and thank you. I'm sorry my phone was acting up. No. No, we, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Germano. And we appreciate you taking the time from Northwell Health to uh, to share your expertise uh, with our wonderful community. Now, I'm going to circle back also to see if um, Reverend Clerkins here from St. Peter's. Um, Reverend, I don't think I don't think he's here yet. So I'm going to come back one more time and shift gears. I'm going to turn it over to our wonderful councilwoman from the town of North, uh, North Hempstead, Marianne Del Monte. Marianne. Thank you, Dr. Hines, very much. And thank you for organizing this. Normally at this time of year, we would be all getting excited about making our travel plans to visit loved ones for Thanksgiving or preparing for those loved ones to visit us in our own homes. Sadly, 
because of the global COVID pandemic and the uptick in cases locally, we are forced to be creative and come up with other ways to connect with the people we love while keeping them safe and healthy. Drive-by greetings for those close by or phone calls or video conferences like this, like this for those farther away or just a couple of safe options. Unfortunately, our circumstances this year requires each of us to wrestle with some difficult decisions and to make some sacrifices. For example, in the interest of public safety and preventing the spread of COVID-19, the town's skate park at Manor Haven Beach Park has been closed until further notice. There were reports of large groups congregating there without masks and not practicing social distancing. The town will continue to monitor the spread of COVID-19 locally and reopen the skate park as soon as it is feasible. In addition, Thanksgiving, we also ha have Black Friday and holiday shopping coming up. Throughout this pandemic, our local businesses have been struggling to survive. Please make it a point to shop locally first and often. If you're concerned about maintaining social distancing while shopping, please know that many of our local businesses have websites you can search while shopping from home. And I'm sure those that don't would love to answer your questions to take your orders by phone. If you'd like to stay informed about things happening in and around Port Washington, please sign up for my email newsletter for regular updates. Simply visit the Town of North Hempstead's website, click on my name, to my it will link you to my council page and you will scroll down to the bottom and sign up. It really only takes a few seconds and it's very informative. As for me, I have never hosted Thanksgiving and never cooked a turkey. This is going to be one interesting Thanksgiving meal for my husband and children. If anyone has a good sweet potato recipe with marshmallows, please send it to me because I need help. Thank you all for listening, but please remember that in order to have all our generations around the table together next year, we need to stop the spread for better days ahead. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you, Councilwoman. Certainly appreciate those words of wisdom. I don't have any recipes for you, unfortunately, though. All right. So without further ado, uh, from Community Synagogue, Rabbi uh, Zeplowitz, thank you for joining us, Rabbi. How are you, sir? Oh, I think you might. Yep, we just got to yeah, make sure. It's, you're there. Great, it's great to be with you. And thank you so much, Dr. Hines. It's really nice to see so many friends. I um I want to tell you that at the end of March, I put something up on my Facebook page that um, was probably shared more times than, than anything else that, that perhaps is becoming relevant again. And it was the following. Never has so little nor so much been asked of every human being at one time. And that is to stay apart so that we can remain together. It's really not that hard. Um, to do that. It's to stay apart so we can remain together. And I, I wanna just share a story that I, I hope ties into both Thanksgiving and being American and our shared American um, sense uh, that also comes from a sense of faith. There's a story of a, of a Jewish immigrant, probably late 19th, early 20th century came to America and he wrote to his rabbi in the old country. He said, I've been to this city of Philadelphia, and I saw there the Liberty Bell. It has a verse from the Torah, from the Bible on it. Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. But the man wrote to his rabbi, the bell's cracked, and they say it can never be struck again. It's as if the crack means America is imperfect. It can't be fixed. So the man wrote to the rabbi, should I stay in America? Or should I come back here to the country that I know? And the rabbi wrote back to his devotee, stay in America and work to repair the crack. It seems to me that that's our job. That's what Thanksgiving really is. That's what Hanukkah and Christmas at the darkest time of the year are really all about, as well as Diwali. It's about 
seeing the light in the dark. It's about repairing the crack. It's about understanding that we, as at least for me as a person of faith, I'm not always in control. And therefore there's something bigger than us. And so at the end of February, we put together a, a task force in our congregation that meets all the time to talk about these issues. But rather than talking about what we do, I'm going to ask us to think about just two last things. First of all, that we all be just a little bit more forgiving of the mistakes that we make along the way, that the police make, that our churches and synagogues and our boards make, that the school board or the school makes. Because you know what? None of us, none of us have been in this situation before and we're all feeling our way forward. So with a little bit of goodwill, a little bit of patience and a little bit of thinking about people trying to do their best rather than to think about the worst, I think that in some ways that can lower the temperature and create a sense of calm as we move forward. And the second thing, and the last thing, is I believe it's really important to acknowledge what we have lost. That we should mourn all the things that we don't have. But along with that, I try to always understand what have we gained? Week after week, I hear bar and bat mitzvah students who tell me, you know, I still fight with my brother and my sister. But somehow these last eight months, we've become closer than we ever were before. I hear family after family that tells me we've never sat down together to meals and that we're talking and we're spending time and we're going on walks. That even at holidays that we've had already where we've been distanced from one another, People have found ways creatively to, to bond to people that they might never have seen before. People in other countries, people far away, people who are older who might not otherwise be able to get out. And thankfully we live in a time when there is Zoom or FaceTime. And so in a sense, it's about reorienting our perspective, not to deny and to mourn, but also to be grateful to use Thanksgiving as a moment to be thankful for the time, to understand that the Shabbat, that the Sabbath is something that tells us all the time, take a time off, go out into the nature, be with the people you love and don't forget to tell them that. And the very, very last thing I wanna say, and this I'm only gonna tell you in secret, I really don't like turkey that much. And so the fact that we're only gonna be three of us in our house made us all decide we're just gonna cook a chicken. And so this year I get what I really like. And so despite the fact that I'm gonna miss being with my family, I don't have to eat turkey, I get chicken. I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Let's try to see the light in the darkness, and let's all try to repair the cracks in our lives. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and good luck in these hard times. Thank you, Rabbi. And uh, I think I'm going to be stopping over your home uh, just to let you know to have some chicken. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Such profound words. So next, what we're going to do is move on to one of our district physicians. We have Dr. Uh, Jackman here. Good evening, Dr. Jackman. How are you? Hi, Dr. Hines. Thank you so much for having me as part of this forum. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Naomi Jackman, and I'm one of the pediatricians over at Healthy Kids Pediatrics down on Main Street right here in our town of Port Washington. And I want to let everybody know that is listening tonight that I was honored and fortunate enough to start this journey with the school district back in June as one of the medical advisors for the reopening committee um, as far as reopening the schools and how that was going to be done. And I will tell you that having gone through that process and actually still on that committee, because we are still meeting, um, I am amazed and I am uh, very much 
uh, appreciative of the tireless work and the successful work that the school district and all the faculty, staff, administrators, et cetera, teachers all the way down to the janitors have done to make this work. And that's how I want to sort of start where I come from, not just as the pediatrician, but as a person who's been involved in making this work for our community. And in the last, I guess it's three months now that the schools have been open, um, having been working in my practice and seeing the children of our community on a regular basis, I can tell you that the schools are safe. They are the safest place for our kids right now. I will reiterate what I think it was Nora Johnson said, there have been really no transmissions of COVID-19 in our schools. I have not seen any cases in my practice or have heard of cases through the committees that I've been on of children getting COVID-19 in school. The kids that come to my office are happy. They're happy that they get to go to school. The elementary school kids are so thrilled they have smiles which of course i can't see but i know under their masks they are smiling that they can go to school and be with their teachers and see other children their age and be with peers and have the mental uh, uh, development that they need beyond just what goes on in school academically and that makes me feel so good even the high schoolers the middle schoolers despite the fact that they're not there every day the fact that they can go into a school and be with others, even if it's only two or three days a week, makes a big difference in their lives. And I see it in my office. When they come in and, they, and I do their checkups, and we talk about this a lot during the checkups, because I am very concerned about their mental health, their developmental health, and just their well-being in general. Having said all of that, I want to go over, and I don't wanna say all the things that Dr. Germano just said, because she herself sees the same thing that I see in, in her office uh, when, with regards to COVID-19, but I do wanna say how important it is for our community to do everything they possibly can, parents, children, students, teenagers, whoever is involved, to do the best they can to have this under control. And the only way that can be done is by people acting responsibly. I unfortunately have heard of situations through my practice, through other doctors in the community, through things that I'm involved with online of events that happen that are seriously not acceptable and have resulted in people getting the virus. And the, all these situations easily could have been avoided if all the people involved would follow the rules. The rules are sometimes not easy. It's not easy for a teenager to not be with their friends. I respect that. I understand that. I empathize with that because that's part of who they are. They only got one shot at this. They're only 18 or 17 once. And it's hard for them to clamp down now so that their future can be better. They don't see it, they're not adults yet. But as their adult parents, you need to also help guide them make those right decisions. I'm asking the parents as well as the students together to work on making the right decisions when they make the decision of whether to go and hang out with their friends, be in their friends' houses. If they were knowingly under quarantine as far as in school, when they were exposed to somebody, follow the rules of quarantine, be responsible. And I know that the Thanksgiving holiday is coming up and we are all looking forward to being with our families, the ones in our households. And hopefully we can see other parts of our families through Zoom and through technology. But make that sacrifice, just like the rabbi said, now so that next year we can all be doing this in person under normal circumstances. I am trying my hardest to educate my patients in my office every day when I see them and remind them what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. 
I don't want to speak like a lecturer. I don't want to shame people. That is not my job. My job as a doctor here in this community is to keep people healthy and safe. And I'm really trusting that the families in our community through this forum will hear that and will follow the rules. And I wish that everybody stay healthy and safe through the whole holiday season. Please make the right decisions. Please do your part. We all want to get through this. Myself, my own family, and everybody around us. I do appreciate everything that the schools are doing. Dr. Hines, thanks again for making this forum happen. And I look forward to only better times with all of us together. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Dr. Jackman. Uh, very much appreciated. And um, Rabbi Sif, I hope you don't mind. I, I may go out of order just to mix it up so we don't have two doctors speaking back to back. Is that okay with you if we mix it up a little bit? Of course. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Hines and um, all those wonderful people on this uh, panel. Um, uh, when, when thinking about um, how I wanted to approach this moment, it made me think about um, a story um, about a small village, un not unlike Fort Washington, where there was excitement growing and the town was going to celebrate the marriage of the rabbi's child. And everyone was looking forward to this wedding. And the mayor even instructed that they would build a huge barrel to be built in the middle of the town square. And the mayor explained that the ladder should also be constructed so that you would climb up to the barrel. And in the barrel, each person in the two weeks before the wedding was supposed to fill a pail of the best wine from their wine cellar and bring it to the village square. Then each villager would, climb, villager would climb the ladder and pour the wine into the barrel. And then on the evening of the wedding, the couple and the family and all of the town would celebrate with the sweetest, most amazing wine and the most amazing celebration that the village had ever known. Well, after this barrel was built and the constructing of the ladder would happen, over the next two weeks, hour by hour, Day by day, a procession of the villagers carried their buckets into the square, and each villager climbed the ladder and poured the contents of their bucket into the barrel. And as the days passed, everyone could see the level of the liquid moving up the barrel because the moisture was absorbed and it began to seep through the wood. So they saw that the barrel was becoming more and more full, and the villagers, everyone became more and more excited. And finally, the day arrived, the wedding was happening. The rabbi was cheerful and the couple was amazing and the community was excited and everyone shouted mazel tov. And then they went into the square to begin the celebration with music and singing. And the first villager went up with their empty jugs, every one of them, stood next to that barrel, ready to fill their jugs with wine to celebrate. And everyone was silent. Because as the mayor turned the spigot, the liquid that came forth was water. The villagers lowered their eyes with shame. How could that be? Why is there water? Over the past two weeks, everyone came with their buckets and filled that barrel with wine. You see, for two weeks, every villager had thought that the other one could get away with pouring a pail of water into the barrel because they thought that everyone else was pouring a pail of wine. Each villager had expected the other villager to do their part, figuring that they had to do nothing. So what could have been a glorious celebration that everyone did their part in something ended up being the saddest day the small village had ever known. So my hope for each of us is that we each do our part, that we each know that we have the faith, the idea that each of us 
are bringing our barrels of wine into our, our, our buckets of wine into our barrel. Because it's in the faith that I have in each of you that I know that we could come to a time that we can celebrate. So it's, it's in the unknown, the unknown, the unknown faith that we have in each other. And my hope is um, in looking out of my fellow panel members who I get to see that I have faith in each of them. And I have faith in each of you. I have faith that, that we will bless each other and protect each other. That we will see the light shine in each one of us. And that we hope and we pray that we have sacred journeys and that we can take them together. So Dr. Hines, thank you. And um, thank each of us because it's, it's really this idea of having this unknown faith in each other that will help us to um, journey forward during this time of Thanksgiving and this time of the unknown. Thank you, Rabbi, v very much. You are all master storytellers for, for sure. And um, I can't thank you enough for all these lessons that we are learning this evening. It's a collective we, for sure. Thank you. So we're gonna move over to Dr. Wilkins. Dr. Wilkins, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. She's one of our other uh, district physicians. So Dr. Wilkins. Hi, good evening. Yashikoach, <clears throat> Rabbi. <laughs> Anyways, first of all, um, I'd like to thank you for having me on this panel, um, speakers involved in helping our community. Again, my name is Dr. Sonia Wilkins and my practice is Port Pediatrics, a division of Pro Health, I'm working right here, right next to the schools. Um, I really fell into this community out of luck and really it was amazing luck. Um, I've had the pleasure of helping families from all walks of life until 21 years of age, people from different countries and cultures, religions, even those on either side of the political aisle, but I'm not going there. Um, this community has done amazing things throughout COVID, but in other times too, as we saw even in stuff like Hurricane Sandy, um, donations, deliveries to hospitals, and really the whole idea of Port Strong, it's, it's absolutely true. Um, this community knows how to come together when we need it the most, but we're all fatigued. We're done with this. You know, we've had enough. We want things the way they were. I sometimes wonder how it was in 1918 when they faced these sort of challenges. I've seen multiple children and adolescents on telemedicine with new onset anxiety, depression, eating disorders, substance abuse, because they have no control of their world. And for many, if not all, school is their world. So I can tell you from my perspective that this virus has turned us all upside down. It's invisible, it can spread without symptoms, hence all of the precautions, because you just don't know. You can't know, so we have to be careful. But personally, I've also heard it from the teen and the tween populations. This stinks, although they've said some worse things. This stinks. You know, I'm done with this. They're invincible, or at least they think they are. But even if they are, and like a lot of people have heard me say within my office as well during this pandemic, we've got the easy part of this. Other than the logistical craziness, we've got the easy part of this. Um, from a sickness part, the kids do fine overall, but they still can succumb to this virus as we've seen from like even the multi-system inflammatory disease, pneumonias and other issues. The Academy of Pediatrics and other infectious disease specialists have discussed the fact that kids are safer in the schools overall. The problem is not in, it's out. Hence why we are here on the Zoom platform today. The rules seem to not apply to the outside world. My office is right next to Weber and Schreiber, as I said. My colleagues and I watch as kids come out of the schools, congregating like gaggles of geese, no masks, et cetera. It concerns us very much as we watch it and wonder, where are these kids going next? It's kind of like the game of Kevin Bacon, where six degrees or less of separation from someone who could fall ill or worse to this virus. So it's about being responsible as a community. And Rabbi Paltiel, I quote you, I remember one of Rabbi Paltiel's sermons, yes, I do remember Rabbi in synagogue, where he talked about the age of the eye, the iPhone, the iPad, et cetera. It's for us now collectively to do what we have to do. It's not about I, it's not about ourselves. 
we are collectively bound together no matter where we are in this town. So what do we what do we gain from simply taking necessary protocols ourselves, the stuff we say all the time, right? Wear a mask, social distance, no congregating large crowds, wash your hands, seems so easy, but we can all be silent su superheroes. And I love my movies, just like the end game, whatever it takes. So if, so here's the thing, if we can stay in school, we can keep our kids mentally healthy. If we can stay in our, in our schools, we can help special needs kids who desperately need their services, not regress on a virtual platform without in-person services, as I saw with my own son who's on the spectrum. If we do our part as a whole, we can keep our elderly safe and others with significant chronic diseases. If we do our part, we can help our essential workers and medical providers reduce their burdens. From our perspective, we're trying to get, contain via rapid testing, vaccines, God willing, are on the horizon, but as another wonderful physician that I know from ProHealth, Dr. Griffin of the Port Yaakov fame from infectious disease specialist has said, keep the seatbelts on. We're not quite off the highway, but we're getting there. Today, I just saw in the news that cases are rising. The Academy put out a statement. There's been a 28% increase in child COVID-19 cases and kids account for more than 11% of all coronavirus confirmed infections in the US. But even if kids are not affected or silently affected, this can potentially affect someone down the line if we don't do what we need to do. Wear a mask, no congregating, wash hands. We need to be careful and safe this holiday season so we can spend God willing more of them together and this town can be Port Strong. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilkins. <clears throat> Certainly appreciate your words of wisdom and for everything that you do for our community. I'm going to turn it over now to Rabbi Mishkin. Rabbi Mishkin, how are you, sir? Uh, there we go. I'm well, Dr. Hines. Great. Thank you. And thank you for uh, holding this forum. It's wonderful to be a part of it. And uh, so much wisdom, warmth, and love coming from everybody. It's very inspiring. Um, so many wonderful things have been said. I just, I'll uh, say it slightly differently, and I'll turn to some ancient wisdom from the Jewish tradition in a work called uh, Pirkei Avot, The Ethics of Our Ancestors. It's about 2,000 years old, but the wisdom there is, uh, is very deep. And in one teaching, a rabbi asks, he asks, uh, who is a hero? And his answer is quite surprising and unusual. He says, a hero is someone who practices self-control. And um, what he means by that is there's all sorts of types of heroes. Of course, there's the great warrior, there's the person facing a difficult challenge and they're scared and yet they know it's important and they continue to move forward. Those are great heroes as well. But perhaps the greatest battle of all where we can be the greatest heroes is the battle we have within ourselves and how we behave uh, in this world. So for some people, knowing what the uh, CDC uh, guidelines are for being healthy and keeping other people healthy, it's very easy. But for the people who uh, um, find them difficult, for the teenagers who want to gather, for the adults who want to gather inappropriately with other people, for people who want to say being with uh, family members and friends on Thanksgiving is so important to me, even though you're not in the same bubble and you shouldn't be doing it. It's for those people that this teaching is so pertinent. You have a chance to be a great hero. The more you wanna be with other people that you shouldn't be, the more you don't wanna wear a mask, by not congregating with other people and by wearing the mask, you are being heroic because you're doing the right thing and you're helping others and you're potentially saving lives, even though it's not what you wanna do. So the uh, pandemic has provided us with an incredible opportunity to be heroic in ways that we never could have been uh, before the pandemic. The teaching continues and the rabbi asks, who is honored? And he answers, one who honors all people. And so again, how we treat other people, how our actions impact other people, that is the most critical thing um, that we should be thinking about in terms of how we make our choices and make our decisions. So I hope everyone will be heroic and everyone will be honorable during this time leading up to Thanksgiving and after Thanksgiving and throughout the months until God willing very soon, there can be a vaccine and this can end. Wishing everyone a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rabbi. Again, for more words of wisdom, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, wow. 
Vice President, Board of Education. And we have uh, Beth Weisberg here. Uh, Beth, thank you for joining us this evening. I know you serve multiple purposes <laughs> within our school community. EMT is one of them, as, opposed, as well as being a um, Vice President for the Board of Education. So thank you for joining us this evening. My pleasure, Dr. Hines. Thank you for hosting this. This is a great idea. I have seen um, this pandemic from a few different lenses. Um, first from, you know, or, or first from closing schools, a decision that was very difficultly made by us, uh, ironically on my birthday. <laughs> so a date I will never forget. Um, right through the spring, um, riding on the back of an ambulance through this. It's, it's been an experience that uh, I don't think I thought in a million years when I decided to raise my hand and join the fire department that I would be uh, sitting in the back of an ambulance during a pandemic and, and working on the front line. So I've seen the worst of what this disease has to offer. And I think that the people who are on this call who know me well from, from Nora and Dr. Hines and, and Pastor Collins, they'll, they'll all tell you I'm the one that comes with the positive news. So I'm gonna say the CDC said today, vaccinations start in two weeks. Folks, we don't have that much further to go. Um, that, that's what I'm here to say. We don't have that much further to go. There is a light at the end of this tunnel and we just need to get there. And we need to get there with as many of our friends and neighbors still here with us as we can. Um, and I think that that's what needs to be in the back of our minds as we approach the holiday season. Um, it, it, it's, this is not a, I, I think two or three months ago, it seemed never ending. And I think that we're seeing that there, there can and will be an end to this. And so let's, let's cross the finish line. Let's, let's, Let's leave it all on the field, right? We, we say in sports, you know, I coached, uh, coached a PYA down here for many, many years. You do not want to walk away without leaving it all on the field. And folks, we, we've got to leave it all on the field. We've got to be responsible and careful. And for those of you who really, really are going to travel, who feel that seeing your family is truthfully the thing that's most important, whether it's to you or to those family members, then be honest with yourselves as you do it. There are ways to do it safely. And there are ways to behave after you've made that choice that keep the rest of the community safer. So I'm not here to tell you how to or what choices that you should make. I'm really not. I, I think you need to make the choices that are right for your family. I just ask that as you make those choices, you think of the rest of the community in the, in, in, in the weeks to come and that you follow those rules. If you have to go and visit grandparents because you really feel that your children need to see those grandparents, then remember the travel rules, follow them. A couple of days out of school will be significantly less impactful than, than knowing that you didn't follow those rules and that entire class of kids is now quarantined for two weeks. The entire community ends up in an orange zone there are so many bad outcomes if we don't follow those rules. So, so I say to you, fulfill what you feel is most important for you, but follow those rules. You know, I spent, I spent my early years as a teacher and as, as a teacher, I will tell you, a few days out of school is not going to hurt. So if you choose to go visit your grandparents, keep your kids home for the week, get them tested as, as the rules say, and send them back to school when it's safe. It's okay, they'll be fine. That will be what keeps our community safe, truly. Let's, let's just leave it out there. A little shout out to, to Stephanie Joanna. We're gonna leave it all out on the field. We're going to play that sport that we're not playing right now in, in, in school. Let, let, let's pretend that this is it. Let's teach our kids how we can be a team, how we can support the team of Port Washington and, and guys, support us, your, your police department, your volunteers, your hospital workers, help us keep things manageable, truly, because we could use a break. Thank you, Beth. Very much appreciate everything that you do for this wonderful community. Last but not least, batting cleanup here. 
uh, I don't know if cleanups really after 15 people, um, but we have Dr. Stephanie Allen. Um, I've been working very closely, not only with Dr. Allen, but uh, Don, Don Ballerman, who pretty much has the Department of Health on speed dial uh, for the past several months. So I'm going to turn over to uh, Dr. Allen, and then I'll have some concluding thoughts. Dr. Allen? Yes, thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you to everyone that's been on the panel tonight. I mean, everything that everyone has said, I just have to continue to echo um, we started off with Ms. Johnson pointing out and, and Dr. Jackman and a couple of the other people, you know, it has been confirmed that the transmission is not happening in the schools. So what we're doing is working. And, you know, to echo what Dr. Wilkins said, we want to keep our students in school. They want to be in school, especially our most vulnerable populations. It's so important that we do everything we can to keep these schools open and keep our kids in school every single day. Um, we are tired of it. I mean, we can get into the whole mental health piece. Yes, we're seeing rises in mental health needs across the board. Um, and again, how do we help with that? How can the schools help with that? Keeping the schools open, keeping our kids with us so that we can keep a tab on how they're doing, how they're feeling. Um, I have to give a huge shout out to our psychologists, our social workers, our guidance counselors that are really keeping a pulse on what's going on with our students, whether they're in school every day like they are at the elementary level or whether it's the middle and the high school and they're in a hybrid model. Um, but they're really on top of this. Our teachers are also doing a great job of, of keeping them alerted to what's going on. But the more we can do as a community to keep our students in school, the better off we're going to be and they're going to be. Um, Ms. Weisberg hit a second ago on the zones. <laughs> you know, um, the first zone that could come up is the yellow zone and testing becomes very, very important. We have to make sure that we're testing people, that people are getting tested, that they're okay with that testing happening because if the testing doesn't happen, our schools may have to close. So again, that's another thing that as we move through this in the upcoming weeks and months, um, please be in touch with us if you have questions about testing so that we can give you the answers that you need and we can make sure that we're doing what we can to keep our schools open. Um, the only other thing that I wanna say again is, thank, is to thank our nurses. <laughs> They've been amazing, Dawn's been amazing. Um, parents, please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, our nurses are well versed. They've done the contact tracing um, certification program so they can answer your questions, even though we don't contact trace that really is the Department of Health. Um, but they can answer your questions. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if to Ms. Widespread's point before you do need to travel, please check the New York State travel website. The information is all on there with the new rules of what we have to do to make sure again that everybody's safe. Um, but if you have questions, again, I say it reach out. Um, and the last thing I would just ask is that if over the coming days there are people that in your family that test positive, reach out to us again, let us know so that we can get the information out to the people that need to have it in the schools and all with the goal of keeping everybody in school as much as possible. Um, so thank you again. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything everybody said here tonight. Um, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Um... So this is uh, this is it. Uh, this is the the end of our, our program today. Uh, it's you know I find it very interesting. It takes something like this to bring us all together, right? So I look out on on the screen, even though our audience can't see everybody who I can see right now. I mean, how beautiful is it to have all of us here at this moment right now, sharing our thoughts and our sentiments for for the collective good of our wonderful community. Um, I, I, I can't thank you enough, and I've learned uh, so much in the very short time that we've spent together. I would like to do this again at some point. It shouldn't have to be like this in order to bring everybody together. You know, and I think it certainly reminds us that we are all interconnected, maybe not like Kevin Bacon, but we are all interconnected in some beautiful mosaic th that really is this wonderful community. I've been here for a year and a half. Now, I certainly don't recall when I interviewed that um, the board asked me, if a pandemic happened, what would you do? Uh, that was never part of the, uh, the interview process. But and as one of our rabbis said before, there is no book for this. You can't go to Borders, even though Borders doesn't exist anymore. You can't go to a bookstore and figure out a pandemic handbook and figure things out. But I think there's one thing that we know for sure is that we have to do this together. There, there is no individual way to do this. We have to do this together and the sacrifices that we make um, is for the collective good. 
Thank you to our wonderful community who has watched uh, this evening. I want to wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving. Please spend some time with your loved ones and let's stay safe as we do so. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for organizing, Dr. Hines. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Be well, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Be safe.